HPMonkeyBond.org, and we're here with Mike Kendall, who's been very instrumental in the HP Pathfinder program, which is one of the three legs of the stool that you guys announced today, right? I mean, it's, a, it's the ecosystem component, right? right so yes. talk about Pathfinder, what it is, why it's important, and um, why don't you start, actually, with your role here at, uh, at HP? So what, what do you bring to the table? Well, a, a couple things. Uh, so I think uh, earlier today uh, it was mentioned by uh, Paul Sandler that the model for this program was a program we did around the HP Blade system, C-Class uh, C7000. It's called uh, HP uh, Solution Builder. And actually, uh, my team pulled that together. And so when it was time to pull together an ecosystem partner program for this whole new architecture. So that was a whole new architecture that began to federate the capabilities of compute, storage, and and networking together. When it was time to put one together here, then um, I kind of answered the call on that. So, and I'm also involved a lot with, you know, a lot of our infrastructure products and our uh, memory disk, but uh, heavily involved in this program. So, we've, good. We've been hearing in this announcement also a hyperscale term that you guys use and it's mm-hmm. in the industry around, you know, massive scale. We know of uh, web companies like Facebook and Google and Amazon, these folks are running massive data centers with web applications. And now you're seeing new applications being run by financial firms, governments, big data, cloud, cloud computing specifically. Um, what what is going on with cloud in particular uh, in the marketplace today, and why is this new announcement, which you guys announced today, around low energy power management? Because developers today are building those next apps, whether it's a Angry Birds-like uh, application that goes supernova overnight, and, and uh, this new breed of developers, they want all these resources, they want a turnkey. Um, some of them are younger developers. Some are old like us, Dave and I, who have been around the block, who understand that you know this stuff doesn't just happen. Um, and so you're involved in the in the foundation of putting this partner program together, um, and you guys are calling the Pathfinder program the the underpinnings of support and enablement. So talk about the impact of this new systems view, this new hyperscale, and what it means to the marketplace and to the ecosystem. Uh, those are great questions. So if you look at uh, as Paul said earlier today, I mean, we've generally been in a world where, and, and HP's been, you know, very much a leader in this area of what I like to call the pizza boxes. So you get like uh, in a 42U rack, you uh, get like 40 plus servers uh, in there, dual core servers, and they have their connections and everything like that. Well, a lot of workloads can really benefit from a lot of cores with a lot of memory and a lot of storage close by them. But you are limited by the amount of space that took up and also limited by the amount of power and cooling, you know, that that consumes as well. So when you think about an architecture like this where you're able to put like 288 uh, processors in a 4U type box. So that's for the Redstone development platform. So how many How many processors? 288 <laughs> in a 4U box. It's mind-boggling. Box, along with their memory. And then you can also exchange that with different levels of, of storage. And they showed you the storage box. Just to give people a sense of that. So you said 288 in a, in a 4U box. Right. Well, how would that compare? How many would you be able to, how many traditional microprocessors, x86 processors would you be able to fit? I mean. Eight. Okay. Because oh yeah, you think you think of like something like a DL three sixty, very popular product that's used extensively, particularly in, in cloud based type applications, because it's very space efficient. You've got one U, and you can put a lot of memory in there, and you have the uh, you know two two processor is uh, right there, so you got you know four of those, you got eight. So, so sorry here, to interrupt, but uh, no, no, but no, it's a, no, it's a great point. So you're talking about two hundred two hundred eighty eight. So that all of a sudden provides a lot of processing capability within a, a pretty constrained space right there. The challenge, and this gets into the partner side of the whole thing, is that requires somewhat of a different approach. So, you know, I was talking to one company. They said, well, if all you're doing is putting lower power uh, servers in a traditional, you know, pizza box and everything, what's, what's the big deal about that? And what's different about that? But if you're talking about putting 288 in there, and they're very closely coupled, so the word that was used this morning was a federated type of architecture. We have a, you have very close coupling of memory. You have a lot of high-speed interconnects uh, between all those within the box before you ever go to an outside switch. And you have storage that's integrated into that. How do you optimize the operating system, the I.O. subsystem, how do you uh, optimize the disk access, the way that you set up your storage, the way you partition your storage, the way that you uh, 
the way that you go ahead and put down applications, the way that you manage, you know, failovers and everything, that changes from the normal pizza box. So that's why when we talk about that we have the HP Discovery Lab, we have the Pathfinder program, that we're really going to bring together a collaborative environment. That's the key word, collaborate together with uh, folks that are very smart in this area. So from the hardware standpoint, Calzada, ARM, other people that are involved, people from the software, from the software stack area, on how you're going to set up and create new ways of managing, new ways of, of um, allocating uh, the software stacks, the new way that you're going to go ahead and manage the I.O. and everything else like that is quite a bit different than a, a standard pizza box type of, type of cluster. So you announced five today, right? Canonical, Red Hat, Calzada, ARM, and AMD. Correct. Those are what we call our foundational members. But we're going to have a lot more. Well, you, 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 how many was it in, in, in the Blade Initiative 300? It was, it's well over 300. Okay. So you, do, you, would, ex- would, you, you would expect similar numbers here? Um, and what kind of uptake? Well, we'll have to see. But I expect that we'll see a pretty rapid uptake uh-huh. on this, you know, once the news of this gets out. And it's very easy for people to go ahead and apply for it. So what it is, it, it is a program where you apply and HP, you know, looks at uh, how you fit into the program and everything. And we'll get back to you on that. But it's very easy to go. If you just go to our hp.com slash go slash moonshot page, one of the pages there is for the HP Pathfinder program. And it'll tell you about it. it. It talks about the five founding members, and then a place where you can go ahead and click and get more information. Has, has, has Oracle applied yet? Uh, you know, I haven't checked the I haven't checked the inbox yet. Um, it must be in your spam folder. Uh, <laughs> Couldn't resist on the Oracle have, joke I there. Haven't, I haven't, haven't taken a look yet. So, Michael, talk about uh, what you learned from the Blades Initiative and what's different here. Well, so. Uh, First of all, let's talk about what's, what, what's similar. Uh, there's a great opportunity to apply value for customers if the hardware and the software and even the services aspects have been designed to work with each other. So you're not just taking, you know, a square peg, round hole, and, and making the best of fit right there. We actually pro- can proactively work with folks to make sure that uh, software stacks and hardware can be optimized together. So that's where you have a lot of similarity. And that's what we did with the HP Blade System Solution Builder Program, is that we worked closely with different companies and actually got them access to the systems, and they could try their software out and find out where they could further optimize it and improve it and make sure it ran better than it would uh, if they just bought it off the shelf. And, and just had to work with a pizza box ty- style, you know, server.